move into hearing from uh, Lorna Slater, MSP, um, Minister for Green Skills, Circular Economy and Biodiversity. Um, warm, warm welcome to you, Lorna. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Are you fine? Are you okay to go? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for the introduction and thank you so much for inviting me to be here today uh, to talk to you about the Scottish Government's plans to transform Scotland's economy. It's lovely to see Catherine Trebek and some other familiar faces. Uh, I get the feeling that we're all on the same side here and that we're all working towards the same thing. So I'm hugely excited to be in this new ministerial role covering green skills, circular economy and biodiversity. Um, I think it shows a clear signal of intent of the Scottish Greens and the Scottish government's shared commitment to tackle the climate and nature emergencies and to reset our economy to create a greener and fairer Scotland. A key immediate priority, of course, is delivering a green recovery from COVID. I'm responsible for quite a lot under my portfolio. The Tories were teasing me about the length of my title, but and possibly it's more than I initially envisioned, but the key area of what I'm working on is to deliver a green industrial strategy as part of our national strategy for economic transformation, which will seek to invigorate Scottish manufacturing and heavy industry. So this is something near to my heart uh, and support Scottish supply chains and create high quality jobs. Having worked as an engineer in the renewable sector, I have seen my, for myself what potential Scotland has. I really believe that we can reinvigorate heavy industry and manufacturing in Scotland using our long proud history of innovation and engineering to build the industries of the future and a more circular economy that is good for both people and planet. A lot of the elements of this are already in place. The challenge now is to bring them together in the green industrial strategy with a clear vision that we all understand, can get behind and frankly, get on with delivering. Um, these are policy actions that really will transform all of our lives. This government has a transformational vision for Scotland's future. We want to create a greener, fairer Scotland built on a well-being economy with a society that is thriving and prosperous. The last 10, 20 months of the pandemic have shown how interconnected social well-being and economic prosperity are. Also, I would say resilience. Um, the resilience of our economy is only as good as how, you know, how, how much money people have in their pockets to get to the end of the month. We've all seen the crucial role that our natural environment plays in well-being and economic prosperity. Harnessing our natural, natural assets and capital, protecting, restoring, and enhancing our biodiversity is a key part of this green industrial strategy. We need to learn to work with nature and to make it work for all of our people and places. To this end, we will bring forward a circular economy bill later in this parliamentary session, helping to facilitate the development of an economy which reduces demand for raw materials, designs products to last as long as possible, and encourages reuse, repair, and recycling. A well-being economy is based on the principles of equality, sustainability, prosperity, and resilience. And there is nothing fair about transforming an economy if we do nothing to address inequality. There's no point in creating a low carbon economy if it is also not fair and a just economy for all. Putting communities in charge of their own destinies is central to their economic well being and indeed our national economic transformation. In the life of this parliament, we will help to create and protect jobs and enable greater community and third sector ownership of assets by taking forward a community wealth building bill. And we will work with COSLA to review our town center action plan to agree on the actions that will support our economic recovery tackle inequality and disadvantage and reduce our carbon emissions. To secure a green economic recovery from COVID, we have committed to invest at least 50 million pounds in restoring our environment and developing the green technologies and industries of the future to create jobs and build a prosperous Scotland. Alongside this, over the next five years, the Green Jobs Fund will provide 100 million pounds to help businesses create green employment through investment. Decarbonizing homes and buildings is a great example of this. We can create a low carbon economy, which is also a well being one, and that tackles inequality and unfairness. It's a three way win. Our new 10 year economic strategy, the National Strategy for Economic Transformation, is key to our ambitions, and we aim to publish it shortly. The strategy will bring together all of our commitments and ambitions for a green recovery. It will set out where we want to be as a country in 10 years' time and how we intend to get there. It will put us firmly on the path to meet our 2030 climate targets. It will create a clear link with the need for a just transition. And we have already agreed to publish just transition plans for key sectors such as energy and agriculture. 
The Just Transition Plan for Industry will sit alongside the Green Industrial Strategy for Scotland. To support investment and growth in green industries, we will explore the creation of a new Green Industrial Catalyst Fund. And ahead of COP26, we will announce the first Pathfinder projects for the Green Growth Accelerator. This will mark an important first step in unlocking up to 20, sorry, 200 million pounds of public sector investment and incentivizing local authorities to deliver low carbon into infrastructure. One of the things that I'm particularly excited about, which came about as part of the cooperation agreement, is that the strategy will explicitly recognize and explore opportunities to enhance the role of alternative ownership models in the economy, and will set out how we provide tailored support to those businesses. Alternative ownership models is a fancy way of saying cooperatives and social enterprises. It's my view that these types of businesses which have a track record of paying their taxes, uh, promoting and delivering fair work and contributing to their local economies are exactly the types of businesses that we want to see more of in Scotland. More businesses that enhance prosperity, especially locally, which ensure wealth is shared equitably and in which local people and communities feel that they have a real stake. Fair paid, secure employment sits at the heart of a well-being economy. It supports higher living standards for all and can offer individuals a route out of poverty. It also enables us to sustain our tax base and deliver better services. That is why fair work will be at the heart of our approach to transforming the economy. Evidence tells us that businesses who treat their employees fairly and with respect can experience improved productivity, performance, and innovation. As a government, we should reward and incentivize fair work. So through Fair Work First, we will work with employers, unions, local authorities, and other stakeholders to ensure that by 2025, where the law allows, conditions are applied to scoring criteria for all public sector grants and relevant non-financial support provided by enterprise agencies. So this is the conditionality, which was a part of the cooperation agreement, which is something I'm really proud of myself uh, having worked on that. The well-being economy also requires a different type of startup, not one that has like a rapid exit strategy or a fail fast mentality. We absolutely embrace entrepreneurship and creativity. We need more innovators in our economy, not fewer, but we also want to build businesses that last with inherent resilience and social capital. To that end, we will increase funding for research and development over this parliament to hundred million pounds to support more businesses at the forefront of developing the technologies for tomorrow. Providing the right infrastructure is crucial to creating a low carbon economy. How and what we create will form part of our transformation. So we will invest 33, 33 billion pounds over the course of this parliament in the national infrastructure mission to create new jobs and markets and provide benefits across Scottish supply chains. We will also deliver future-proofed broadband through reaching 100% through reaching program, which will give access to super fast broadband to every home and business in Scotland and improve mobile connectivity in remote and rural not spots through our Scottish 4G infill programs. Even though both of these issues are reserved matters, we will provide the infra infrastructure upon which to build a green recovery. But we know how important digital connectivity is to supporting more carbon efficient working, learning and living as well as accessibility. So these are investments that we are happy to be making. We know that good green jobs represent enormous economic and environmental opportunities for Scotland's recovery. To transform our economy, we want to ensure these opportunities are distributed fairly and are sustainable for businesses and employees. Therefore, we will invest an additional 500 million pounds to support the green jobs of the future, including upskilling and reskilling people to access these and addressing skills gaps and shortages as part of our commitment to a just transition. A 20 million pound investment in our national transition training fund this year has kickstarted that work and will support the hardest hit sectors, uh, the, the sectors hardest hit by the pandemic and the EU exit. We all have a role to play in transforming our economy and in creating a green recovery. We have undertaken extensive engagement to inform the development of the National Strategy for Economic Transformation. And thank you to everyone who took the time to share their views, knowledge, and experience. The strategy will also draw on the recommendations from the recent citizens' assemblies to ensure that those views are represented. You will be reassured to know that the government is trying hard to work holistically and thematically to design the strategy, focusing on three key priorities. Investing and supporting the industries of the future, good and green jobs, and delivering across Scotland, regionally and nationally. And you will probably be aware that we have established a new Council for Economic Transformation, 
involving people from a range of backgrounds to guide us in delivering a focused plan of actions and projects as part of the national strategy. I don't think we can underestimate the importance of the strategy for economic transformation. We have until 2030 to significantly cut our emissions and begin to meet our statutory climate change targets. We must begin a process of rapid change right across our economy if we are to achieve these ambitions. But we shouldn't be seeking to transform our economy just because we have to. Failing to transform our economy into a low carbon well-being one would be missing a huge opportunity to build back after the pandemic to deliver an economy and society with equality, equality, sustainability, prosperity, and resilience at its core. There is no doubt that transforming our economy will be challenging. It will involve tough choices, but it will also provide Scotland with a chance to fully realize the potential that we undoubtedly have to make better use of our natural assets and crucially protect them for future generations and to create a fair and different future for all of our people and places. I'm up to the challenge and I'm excited by the prospects of transforming our economy. I hope you are too. Lorna Slater, thank you so much. That was fantastic. You opened that by saying, I think we're on the same side and I think we agree. Um, everything that followed, um, I'm sure people will be deeply impressed by um, and the need to build a greener, fairer Scotland built on a wellbeing economy. Um, something that we all share in this group. I know you're not taking questions, Lorna. I wanted if I might sneak in just one, just because what you said fitted in really nicely with what Catherine Trebek said initially. Um, is there any more you can tell us about that 10 year strategy and the consultation and the process around that? I know lots of this group will be keen to hear about, keen to hear about this. Um, just that it's underway just now. I had a meeting this morning, even with the cabinet secretary on that. So I am working on the green industrial strategy part of that. So that is, it is a live bit of work that's happening. It's taking up quite a lot of my time and, and time throughout the government and civil service. So it is happening right now. And I expect you would get to see it in the next few months. Okay, thank you so much. That's amazing. Lorna Slater, MSP, Minister for Green Skills, Circular Economy and Biodiversity. Thank you so much for coming along.